Good evening. Hope everyone's doing okay today. Today is Thursday, and as uh, promised or stated, uh, we're going to review and continue to continue on on what happened during this holy week um, as Jesus prepares to go to the cross for us. Um, if, if you can get your Bibles, we're going to be in Matthew, uh, Luke, and John. So I'll give you the verses shortly. But today can be called, um, it would be called Maundy Thursday. Maundy Thursday. So let's pray before we get started. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the beautiful day you have given us, Lord. We thank you, God, because we woke up alive today, Father, Lord. There's some that did not make it through the night, Lord. And we pray for those families, Lord, that you comfort them at this time, Lord. We ask you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit guide us in this lesson, Lord. We ask you, God, that you speak to us today, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that I'm a vessel that you use tonight, Lord. We thank you. We praise you. Amen. It's good to see you guys online. But today it's going to be considered Maundy Thursday. I don't know if you know what that is, but we're going to talk about that very shortly. Not all the churches use that term. But the simple meaning of Maundy Thursday is going to be foot washing Thursday. And that's one of the events that took place today. So let me get my notebook here. So as we go through this, the first thing I want to start with is going to be the foot washing of the disciples. And uh, let's go to John uh, chapter 13. Let me get over to my computer here. John chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. And I'm going to read this for you. It says, Jesus washes his disciples' feet. It says, it was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the, fo the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in pro progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Is Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the mill, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. So here we see Jesus begin to, been, begin to wash the disciples' feet. Now, if you know anything about biblical history or just in, in, that, in that time frame, is the servants would usually wash the feet of the travelers that came to the house. So if someone came to your house, a, a courteous uh, offering would be to have your servant clean their feet because a couple of reasons. Everything was dirt and everyone wore sandals at that time. So as a, as a courtesy, you washed their feet. But here we see Jesus, right? The Messiah. He's washing the feet of the disciples. What a humbling experience that is. So that's why some of the churches call it Maundy Thursday because they still practice this on Thursdays. Now, what a very humbling experience that is to have the Savior washing the dirty feet of his disciples, knowing that he's going to be going to his death soon. Let me read you something. It says, Holy Week takes a somber turn on Thursday. From Bethany, Jesus sent Peter and John ahead to the upper room in Jerusalem to make the preparations for the Passover feast. That evening, that evening after sunset, Jesus, Jesus washed the feet of his disciples as they prepared to share in the Passover meal. By performing this humble act of service, Jesus demonstrated by example... How believers should love one another. Today, many churches practice foot washing ceremonies as part of their Monday Thursday services. Jesus did it by example. Now, I think that right there, that by example, he led by example. So as believers, 
We need to lead by example, right? We need to show love if we want love in return. We need to be humble if we expect people to be humble around us. So I believe the message in there is Jesus humbled himself, but led by example. Very important message right there. Very important. Let me continue reading. It says, Then Jesus shared the feast of Passover with the disciples, saying, now, let me read you that verse. And that's going to be, for, we know it as the, the Last Supper, or some of you, uh, a lot of us know it as Holy Communion. At Bethel Temple, we celebrate Holy Communion the first Sunday of every month. We're going to go to Matthew 26. Matthew 26, and it's going to be 26 and 29. And I know some people use different scriptures, but we're going to use 26 26 to 29. And it says, While they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Wow, powerful stuff right there. You can find that in Matthew, you can find that in Luke. So Jesus has, he come, he begins to have supper with him and he institutes Holy Communion. Now, Holy Communion is, is a very important part of your Christian walk. Uh, I believe, you know, I believe that you should partake in Holy Communion. Now, a couple of warnings while doing Holy Communion. Holy Communion is, is a holy thing. You're doing it in remembrance of God. You're not doing it just to participate in this function going on in the church. You're doing it in, mem in remembrance of God. For what? For what he did for us. For the blood that was shed on Calvary for you and I. That's why we do Holy Communion. At Bethel Temple, we ask that you went, that you're saved, that you're washed by the blood of Jesus. That you what? You've asked for forgiveness. Maybe you've offended somebody. Maybe you, you've offended your, your spouse, a, a family member, a friend, or, or maybe you've offended God. You need to go before God with a clean heart and ask him for forgiveness. And now you need to believe that he will forgive you. Now, when you have asked for forgiveness, that means what? You're not going to go and do what you did again. Very important right there. So Holy Communion, it's important that you, you go to a church that does Holy Communion. If you need a church that needs does Holy Communion, we do it on first Sunday of every month. And we just did it live a couple weekends ago. As we move on, another important thing that happened after they celebrated the, the uh, Holy Communion or the Last Supper, Jesus went to the garden, to the Garden of Gethsemane. And here we know about Jesus praying. He began to pray. He asked his disciples to pray with him. So let's go to that. And I'm going to go to Luke 22, Luke 22. And we're going to be chapter 22, excuse me, verse 39 to 46. I know that's a lot of Bible reading, but I say this all the time, you will survive. 39 to 46. Jesus prays on the Mount of Olives. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, net down Nell knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. 
Why are you sleeping? He asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Wow. Here we find Jesus, right? This is that point in time where he knows it's going to happen. He knows it's going to happen. And I, I believe, I believe he was asking, Father, if you're willing, take this cup from me. But let your will be done. Maybe you and I would have said, I don't want to do it. Let them do it. Make someone else do it. But here Jesus is saying, Father, let your will be done. Not what I want. We know what he asked, but he's saying, not my what I want, Lord, what you want. And we know what Jesus, what the Father wanted. He wanted his son to die on that cross for our sins. And what's sad here is as Jesus is, as Jesus is praying, you know, we read about the, the tears of blood or the tears uh, as if blood was coming on down his cheeks. But what I find the sad part is where he left the disciples praying. The disciples could not continue praying. What did they do? They fell asleep. Come on, be honest with me. I know there's some people out there that may have fallen asleep at prayer. I've heard you snoring back there. Now, you may have caught me one time or another, but let me tell you something. This was an important time. Even the disciples, the ones that were with him at that time, even they messed up. But let me tell you something. We can be forgiven. If you know what, if you're not a prayer warrior, right now is the time to start Start learning to pray. Start, start with small. Start with five minutes. Then move up to 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. You can do it. I believe you can. And you know what? Always start your prayers of thank, with thanksgiving. Now, as Jesus is done praying, he wakes up the disciples and they get ready to leave. Now, something happens here. I wonder if you know what happens. Yes, this is the betrayal. Judas Iscariot betrays Jesus. Now, let's go. Let me continue reading. Luke 22, and we're going to reach 47 through 53. Jesus is arrested. While he was still speaking, a crowd came up, and the man who was called Jesus... One of the twelve was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus asked him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? So he knew right away. He knew what Judas was up to. He knew that he was gonna de he was gonna betray him with a kiss. So when you think that you're pulling a fast one on the Lord, you're not. He already knows what you're gonna do. So let me continue reading. But Judas denied it. A woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else, I'm sorry, I jumped my verse again. I did that yesterday. Let me back up. 51. But Jesus answered, no more of this. And he, oh, oh my, let me back up. I'm getting it all in the head of myself. Okay, verse 48. But Jesus asked him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When Jesus' followers saw what was going to happen, they said, Lord, should we strike with our swords? And one of them struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. But Jesus answered, no more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. You remember hearing that story in the other Gospels. I believe it was Peter who cut his ear off and Jesus touched his ear and it was as if nothing had ever happened. So that's a miracle in itself, even though Jesus showed compassion, even though they were going to arrest him and lead him to his death. Wow, what an amazing person. The fact that he knew Judas was going to betray him. The fact that even though they went to, erase, uh, went to arrest him and escort him to his death, he still showed compassion. Now, we know what begins to unfold. Jesus is placed on trial. And before the morning comes, in the early morning it says, Peter disowns Jesus. Remember earlier in the Gospels, 
Christ had told him, someone will deny me here. And I believe Peter spoke to him and said, will it be me, Lord? And the Lord confirmed that to him. So as Peter denies Jesus before the crow sounds, Jesus is his trial is beginning. So as we get ready to prepare for Friday, the Friday that we all know what happens. But today, as we wrap this up, we have to remember some important lessons here. First one is Jesus humbled himself and washed the feet of his disciples. The second one was what the Lord's Supper, the Holy Communion. We need to do this in remembrance of the Lord. And then we, we learned that he prayed in the garden. He prayed, uh, he prayed that this cup would pass from him, but yet he said, Lord, if it is your will, be done. And as Jesus was betrayed, he still showed compassion to the ones that wanted to harm him. So I hope you join us tomorrow, Friday. Um, it's going to be a, a great continuation of this. And uh, read your Bible if you can. I know everybody's busy, but yet we're all staying home, so you got some time. So I want to continue to pray for you, and I ask that you continue to pray for me, and pray for my church, Bethel Temple, and we thank you for joining in. Let me pray and let's dismiss. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this evening, Lord. We thank you, God, because you were in our midst, Lord. Father, it was a short Bible study, Lord, but God, we had to reflect and we had to remember what took place today, God. I pray heavily, Father, that you prepare us for tomorrow, Lord. I pray, Lord, that we will make that commitment to read the Gospels, Lord. I pray, Father, that we will make that commitment to pray for people, Lord. Lord, I ask you that you continue to use us in a mighty way. Lord, I thank you. I praise you in Jesus' name. Thanks again. You can check us out on YouTube, Bethel Temple, Bethel Temple Rosemead. And we have an Instagram page and we're still working on getting everything broadcasted on that. But you can find us here, Facebook live stream or on YouTube. God bless you and I love you.